Discovering a new species of insect has always been a dream of mine. However, finding an undescribed species in the year 2023 and in this part of North America is pretty unlikely. However, it's not impossible. So before we get into the footage, there's a few things we need to go over. Uh, first of all, uh, for the sake of convenience, I'll be using the uh, proper taxonomic terms, uh, which I'll put some of those on screen if you're not familiar with them. And also, we'll be referencing quite a bit the uh, app and website iNaturalist, which uh, if you're not using already, I highly recommend it. And now, let's introduce the insects that we'll be studying. Among the many different types of katydids, there exists a tribe of katydid called Copiforini, or commonly known as coneheads. And worldwide, within this tribe, lies 58 different genus of conehead katydids, with some of the oldest records being first described in the 1700s, and most recently in 2023. Coneheads are among some of the loudest katydids, and sometimes they can be pretty abundant. In fact, some people even use them as food. My recent focus has been on the subgenus Neoconocephalus, which, as you can see, has quite the list of species already. But is it possible that there's more of them to be found? Well, to find that out, we need to go back to where I first started on this journey, before I even knew I would be making this video. In the process of making a YouTube video, I tried going to this little meadow I found on Google Maps, and it turned out to have a huge population of grasshoppers, katydids, and a whole bunch of other insects. So later that night, I decided to stop by again, not to film anything, but just to look around real quick and see if anything was out. The first thing I saw was this green cone head, and I noticed right away that it had a bit of a stockier body than normal, and it also had these wavy wobbly body lines, uh, which you can kind of see in this comparison, but this is also a male versus a female, so uh, we do have to take that into consideration. But I assumed that this was probably just a round tip cone head anyway, so I moved on. On the other side of the road, I also saw another one, but like I said, I really wasn't planning on catching anything, I just wanted to quickly check the spot out at night, so that was it. So, fast forward to October, and due to my terrible screenshots, I still didn't have proper IDs on the two cone heads I saw. And at first I wasn't really worried about it, but eventually my curiosity started to get to me. I kept thinking, why did this one seem different than the round tip cone heads I've seen in the past? I mean, there's no way it's not one of those, right? Well, to ease my mind, I decided to go back and get some proper photos. But with fall slowly turning into winter, the katydid season was coming to a close. I was running out of time, so to make the most of my trip, I decided to go in with the goal of collecting as many specimens as possible. That way I can get a better idea of what species are actually present in this habitat and find out if I was being delusional or if there actually was any mystery species at this spot. As soon as I got there, I could hear multiple species of katydids, so I was ready to start catching. But I quickly found out that trying to catch these things while holding a flashlight and trying to film proved to be very difficult. And it looks like I wasn't the only one trying to catch cone heads that night. But I wasn't here for mantises. So I kept catching. And catching. And eventually, I was ready to call it a night and head back home. So we came out with a total of seven cone heads and one grasshopper. And now we can move on from our two initial suspects. And we'll take a better look at this board later. So now it's time to go through the tedious process of getting up close photos so we can figure out what we're actually working with here. And our first suspect is pretty much a standard example of what a round tip cone head should look like. Nothing suspicious about this guy, or gal, I should say. So let's just put this one in this smaller container for now. Moving on to our next suspect. This one was pretty cool looking, but pretty much a, another standard example of a round tip cone head. Nothing too crazy. He was missing an antenna though, and one of his legs. Our next suspect was very easily identifiable as a sword bearing cone head. The next one was not in the best condition. And also the marking on his cone was a little bit weird, but overall the shape was right so I don't really see anything weird about it. 
and suspect number five was a little bit tricky. The cone was a little bit circular and kind of reminded me of a broad tip cone head. And also the marking was just pretty much all black fading down to the bottom. So I guess this guy is a little bit weird, so we'll put him in this container for now. Now, suspect six was actually pretty weird. The cone was kind of like a strange mix of sword bearing cone head and round tip cone head combined together. And the marking was a little bit different and the actual length of the cone as well was pretty unusual. And suspect seven was just as weird, if not more weird. The marking on the cone was almost non-existent. It's supposed to come down a bit and be like a straight band going across. And not only that, but the shape was also weird. It was kind of pointed instead of the rounded rectangle that it's supposed to be. So this guy was definitely suspicious. And I saw another strange thing while I was editing. Have you ever seen an ant jump like this? Because I haven't. And we can't forget about the guy that was eating one of Arcadia's fallen legs, the two-striped grasshopper that we also caught last night. And as you can see, he was in pretty bad condition. But that's part of nature, and I let him go. So now we're making some progress, and we have all of our katydids separated. And now we can release the ones that we're not keeping, which are the ones that have a lot of damage, and the ones that are 100% not suspicious. So now, it's time to upload the photos to iNaturalist so we can get some IDs, and so we can figure out what the experts have to say on our mystery specimens. Two days later, I got the notification that some IDs were made on my iNaturalist page. And what I saw was that we got IDs on all of them except for these three, which happened to be our three remaining suspects. This got me pretty hyped, but it raised a few questions, and it also came with a new set of problems. And that's where this guy comes in, Brandon Wu, a Cornell graduate and current PhD student at the Texas A&M University and a true orthoptera expert. So first, let me show you some of what he said. So if these don't fit the description of any of our described species, then what are they? Well, before I show you the rest of Brandon's comments, let's do a little background check on our two most different suspects. I did some research on the spot we found them in, and it turns out that this area actually isn't as boring as you might think. The town of Moreau and its surrounding areas have a decent amount of historical events, including a lot of Native American history, and was part of the inspiration for the last of the Mohicans. And after digging up as much history as possible, to make a long story short, it seems like any battles that were fought, houses that were built, pretty much any human activity since the beginning of time, all occurred basically everywhere except where we found Arcadiadids. So this strip of land is basically untouched except for when they built these power lines over to the side here. So could this microhabitat be holding some sort of hidden ancient species? Well, I highly doubt that. But given the surrounding Native American context, as well as the shape of the cones on Arcadiadids, I think a suitable name for these guys could be something like the Arrowhead Conehead or something along those lines. So before I show you the rest of what Brandon Wu said, let me assure you our story is not over just yet. He said, They are strange, but it doesn't seem outside of what can be seen as a typical range of variation. I just double checked, and every other known Neoconocephalus in the US can be safely ruled out. So, unless this is an undescribed species, which I think unlikely for this group of insects in this part of the world, it should represent just a weird N. retussis. I guess one could try to get males that look like this and compare their song against more standard N. retussis males as another measure. So although I agree with Brandon's thoughts and agree that N. retussis is a valid ID and a good placeholder for now, I decided that maybe I should keep some of the katydids for further examination just in case. After all, the photos I took weren't the best quality and more importantly, if we can get some audio recordings, that can be a big deciding factor on whether or not they're a subspecies, a new species, or just weird looking. So I started researching about how to keep coneheads as pets so I could let them die of natural causes instead of just killing them just to preserve them and I stumbled upon this important bit of information. So after learning this, I decided the best thing to do at this point would be release all of the katydids except the two weird ones, and since these parasitic flies could be potentially killing them at any time now, I couldn't risk letting them die in that way. So I decided to humanely euthanize them by freezing them. So now we have two specimens that can be used for research and as evidence in the future if needed. 
but the problem now is that we have no way of getting a recording of their sound, and at this point, it looks like we won't get a chance to do that until the next Katie Did season arrives. So, what can we do now? Well, I came across a research paper that talked about two similar morphs of pygmy grasshopper, and I learned that making a new species official can be extremely complicated. As you can see, these studies had tons of work put into them and hundreds of specimens examined, and despite all this, they still haven't been able to come to a solid conclusion on this case. So the bottom line here is, yes, we did find some katydids that don't fit the description of any described species. But the question still remains, are they just a couple of weird looking round tip coneheads, or are they actually a new species of Neoconocephalus? Well, we won't know for sure until the next conehead season arrives, and for now, we'll just consider them as a couple of weird looking dudes. But I can definitely guarantee you that next season, I will be catching more. And until then, I'll keep looking and observing the wildlife around me, and I encourage you to do the same. Mm -hmm.